let's have a look at some major results and lessons that one can take away from uh, from some of these studies um, using some of the approaches that I just uh, mentioned. Let me say, first of all, religion is not the most frequent object of uh, research um, in the relevant studies, but it looks that especially in Arabic hate speech, religion plays a crucial role. And if one, however, looks at um, hate speech from the European Union, uh, for example, from different countries there, um, there are um, other targets, um, and these other targets often are even um, are more prominent in, in hate speech than religion um, is. And if it is religion, of course, uh, it's for the most part always Islam. A study on the framing of Muslims on the Spanish internet. Uh, here there was a big newspaper corpus that was um, investigated. Uh, the investigators looked at frequent collocations, lexical neighbors, whatever you want to call this, uh, using corpus linguistic tools. And the adjective Islamic is frequently used with violent concepts such as uh, terrorism. And this, of course, indicates a conceptual continuity between terrorism and Islam. Um, so that terrorism is clearly part of the framing conveyed by the word Islamico um, in Spanish. And um, uh, on the next slide, you then see um, that there are main messages, two main messages that the authors uh, take away uh, from this uh, study. First of all, the negative framing that links Muslims uh, to terrorism. And secondly, an interesting difference between the adjectives um, Islamico and Musulman, uh, it's also Islamic and Muslimic uh, in, other, in other countries. So Islamico has clearly this negative uh, framing, but um, Musulman or Muslimic uh, is in fact neutral or even uh, used in positive frames. So these two are really different, in, different with regard to the frames in which they um, occur. And in fact, um, when Islamico appears together with Musulman or Arabic um, in Spanish, then the framing becomes neutral. So it's an interesting difference. And in fact, this was found also in many other European countries that, um, um, that in fact, uh, Islam, Islamic is, uh, is um, much more negatively framed than, for instance, Muslimic. This is just one thing that we can learn, that we have a stigmatization of, um, of Muslims in Spain, and this is something that is considered to be um, a dangerous side and a uh, sign and something that may escalate into hate speech and hate crime in, um, in Spain. Uh, there was a study where specifically um, Arabic Twitter sphere was investigated. So here, 6,000 tweets were investigated, 1,000 tweets for each of the six religious uh, groups, um, and uh, this was Jews, uh, Christians, atheists, um, we had also um, Sunni and, and Shia uh, distinguished. Um, now, first of all, what is interesting is that about 50% of the discussions about religion in Arabic Twitter sphere is about hate towards religious groups. This is far higher than in any other Twitter sphere that uh, has been investigated uh, so far. And especially uh, this hate is directed towards Jews and atheists. Um, next slide. And well, I mean, essentially the next two slides are also illustrate this. Um, so I just wanted to give this as one example where, um, where sentiment um, analysis, for instance, it was applied to the um, analysis of um, specifically um, Arabic um, hate speech tweets. The two projects that I, that I briefly mentioned, the EU uh, project, the contact one and the farm one, uh, they have even as, as part of their mission uh, that they uh, provide also instruments for counter hate speech and then also to, um, to fine tune the mechanism, mechanisms for detecting hate speech. Um, and this is in fact what we find in many um, of these other projects that I also, um, that are also represented by using these big data automatic analyses, uh, analysis devices. Um, well, I think um, this is really um, part of the funding strategy also if the EU, if the relevant um, projects are funded, uh, that it is expected that this can then also feed back into uh, hate speech detection mechanisms. And I think this is uh, very subtle. Of course, 
Um, you have to refine this more and more. I mean, uh, I talked about the difference between uh, soft and hard um, um, hate speech. So um, all these things that are hidden, okay, all those things where you need perhaps um, approaches that tell you more about um, um, how you may not express something literally, but you may mean it. You may mean more than what you're literally saying. I think you, can, you will increasingly also find mechanisms that um, and, and tools to train the, uh, the software to, dis, to spot this. 